Hello and welcome to AITPM News. Transport computer models have often been used for predicting volumes and evaluating specific projects. But as we embrace new technologies, either reluctantly or with enthusiasm, should we be looking more and more to models to look at strategic directions? Again, we hear from international modelling expert Lewis P. Lowe Willemson, who is a keynote speaker at the 2017 AITPM National Conference. The models are very useful and I think essential we can live without them. But the way in which we use them should change. And in fact, it is changing. It is changing in the sense that we imagine alternative scenarios for the future. This is the only thing we can say about the future. It's not going to be like the present. It's going to be different. But we don't know exactly how different in in many dimensions, not just the autonomous vehicle dimension. And then use models to explore how these different futures will work under different type of decisions and get a a combination of quantitative and qualitative understanding of that future and understand, at least provide some better guidance on what type of choices, decisions will be more helpful given the uncertainty about the future and how it appears that the future will pan out. But I think governments in different places in the UK, I don't know that much about Australia, but I am working in New Zealand at the moment, governments are coming to terms with that and looking at better ways of exploring alternative scenarios and what should be done about them. At least governments, I'm not sure yet decision makers are ready for that, but the work, the groundwork is being done. The National Conference will be held on the 16th and 17th of August in Melbourne with a cocktail reception on the night of the 15th and workshops on the 18th. Hello and welcome to AITPM News. A number of major privately constructed road projects with some government subsidies have proved financial failures, mainly due to inaccurate forecasting of traffic volumes. While not referring to any specific examples, international modelling expert Lewis Pilo Willemson gives some ideas on what can go wrong. The projects were given with too much emphasis in uh, who provided the most financially attractive proposition to the government, and that team took the project. Usually that meant somebody who could build very cheaply, not often the case, or somebody who can be extremely optimistic about the future traffic and revenue from that particular project. And the governments should not accept bids which are overly optimistic because at the end of the day, is a little the pensioner who pays for that or the future patient, pensioner who pays for that. And that is not looking after the welfare of the citizens. Actually preparing a bid is a very expensive exercise for a group. It may cost 10 or more million dollars to prepare a bid. Then if the bid is very expensive and you win it by being over optimistic, there is a lot of perverse incentive to be overly optimistic. In particular, if you lost one or two or three bids before you spent 30 million and you got nothing, you tend to have a lot of incentives to be over optimistic. In my experience, bidders and sometimes banks are very clever in encouraging consultants to also be over optimistic. Pilo is a keynote speaker at the 2017 AITPM National Conference. There's been a lot of talk about connected vehicles, passing information between vehicles and also infrastructure, such as traffic lights. But the focus seems to have been on vehicles. Yet there is a trend of increasing harm in road crashes to people who are not vehicle occupants. And there are great benefits in encouraging active transport that will, in many cases, lead to pedestrians and cyclists being in close proximity and indeed interacting with motorised vehicles. Anthony Rowe, an associate professor at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, with the help of small lightweight technology, wants push bikes to feed information to nearby cars to avoid collisions and has conducted research to this end. An AITPM branch meeting last year in Melbourne looked at this issue 
And at this year's national conference, Dr Madridge Savi from Melbourne University will present a paper on Melbourne's national connected multimodal transport testbed, which studies connected data from vehicles, cyclists, pedestrians and infrastructure in a busy five square kilometre test area. Relevant links to some of this information is on our website. Last year, an international transport expert said how amazed he was that many transport planners believe that the future can be planned and managed very thoroughly. At the 2017 AITPM National Conference, the final plenary session is a panel of experts which will include a representative from Uber, a company that fits perfectly into the mould of a disruptor. Also on the panel is Rachel Smith. In future video news stories, we will present her comments on how we often fail to understand people's real needs and situations but in the context of whether it is the elegant plans or the entrepreneurs who will have the biggest impact, she says this. And I also think we spend way too much time navel-gazing, so we know what colour car is going to turn right in March 2031, and then people like Elon Musk and Uber and you know some of those amazing entrepreneurs around the world have worked out what the problem is, they've got a solution, they're agile and they can be here straight away and solve the problem and we're kind of as an industry quite often left behind. Hello and welcome to AITPM News 